Welcome to The Now, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm Mika Burton. The Nintendo Switch release date is just a little over a month away, and we are continuing to learn more and more about what the console is capable of, which is a departure considering usually we know everything about a console like mm -hmm. six months in advance. Nintendo posted a list of specifications on its UK site, which includes rundowns of the console and the dock, as well as the Joy-Cons. And like good gamers, we went over those specs with a fine tooth little comb, because we can't wait for March 3rd. Oh my God, we can't wait for March 3rd. No, we, we're just doing everything we can to get as much switch in before then as possible. <laughs> uh, so first things first, Nintendo shed a little bit more light on the subject of voice chat. Well, intentionally or unintentionally. <laughs> the spec sheet mentions a headphone mic jack on the switch, which means we think that it's capable of supporting a headset. That's usually what the mic part of that means. Nine that's, out of 10. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> deal because previously Nintendo has seemed to indicate that the only way you can talk to other players online is through their smartphone app, which has led to a lot of grumbling among gamers. But according to these specs, it could be possible that headsets will also be supported. Hmm. Also, a Switch compatible headset popped up on GameStop's site recently. So hopefully that's the end of that drama and there are actually options to use your console for the voice chat. Just to be clear uh, as well, we've reached out to Nintendo asking for clarification on that. We haven't heard back yet. If we do, we'll update in the description. Nintendo's busy. They got a lot of emails coming. <laughs> they do have a lot of emails, <laughs> I'm sure. As for the Switch's processor, did Nintendo finally tell us what's under the hood? Did they? Of course not! Okay. Duh. <laughs> Instead, the spec site just indicates that's an NVIDIA customized Tegra processor, which we already knew, but it doesn't tell her whether or not it's the latest model. To be fair, Nintendo never shares those sort of specs. Someone will have to tear open the box to find out. And by golly, someone will. Yeah. Now, nobody expects the Switch to rival the horsepower of PlayStation 4 or the Xbox, but a lot of people are still curious as to what exactly is powering that console. Unfortunately, sorry, we're gonna have to wait for that teardown. It's gonna take until launch or until someone gets a press console that they don't really wanna keep around and solve that mystery for us. The Switch will also feature Bluetooth functionality and wireless LAN support. It has 32 gigs of system memory, which we already knew, and it supports microSD, microSDHC, and microSDXC memory cards which you will definitely need because 32 gigs is itty bitty 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 bitty. Yeah, so if you're gonna be downloading games digitally, you're gonna need to expand that memory. Oh, I yeah. do like hearing about the Bluetooth though because that implies as well that that's the system that it may use to connect to other switches if you're playing with a bunch of other people on the go. Uh, as for battery life, Nintendo provided a bit more detail in that area. The console's battery can last more than six hours, it said, but that varies depending on the software and usage conditions. So in the case of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which pretty much everyone will be playing at launch. The you, game, you really have no choice. No, seriously, that's, that's what you will be playing at launch. The game will only last about roughly three hours on a single charge, but where are you playing the Switch without an adapter and a port, so just plug it in. <laughs> Nintendo also gave <laughs> info on how much the system will weigh in handheld mode, which is important for long playing sessions on the go, unless you want to do like sweet bicep curls. <laughs> the Switch will weigh 398 grams with both Joy-Con controllers attached. That's just under a pound for all the yanks, so it's not actually <laughs> gonna get you very swole. As for the Switch's video output, it'll have a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second, presumably in docked mode. When it's in handheld mode, the Switch's resolution drops to a max of 1280 by 720. Now, speaking of displays, we also got a look at the Switch's home menu, where you can start games and do all the other normal stuff, like manage your friends and change various settings. The UI, which looks actually a, kind of a little bit PlayStation-y, mm. to us at least, has a news tab too, where you can get game news as well as tabs for the eShop and a screenshots album. Ooh. As for the Joy-Cons, they're Bluetooth enabled and have a 20 hour battery life. Plus they could support Amiibos. Remember those? Everyone remembers Amiibos. Everyone remember those. Especially the Wooly Yoshi one. Oh, they're so cute. And the giant Wooly Yoshi one. Oh, it's even cuter. <laughs> in other Switch news, more and more launch titles are starting to trickle in as some indie developers have announced that they're getting on board. Initially, Nintendo announced a pretty skimpy five launch titles, including Breath of the Wild, 1-2 Switch, Just Dance, Super Bomberman R, and Skyland Imaginators. Now, that's slowly starting to change is being rounded out, mostly thanks to those indie devs as mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicalis recently said that The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus will be available on launch day, followed by Square Enix saying that the JRPG I Am Setsuna will also be available. Tootie Boy also announced that World of Goo, Little Inferno, and Human Resource Machine will be available at launch if you haven't played them on the other systems. So that brings our launch list up to 10, count them, 10. Less games. That's so many. Which, yes, that's lots less than the Wii U. Which launched 
23, 23 games back in 2012. Is it that way? It is for the audience. So I was right the first time. <laughs> Aw, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Switch will continue to get new games throughout the year, though. Later in the spring, we will see the fighting game ARMS, along with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Houseman Heroes, Puyo Puyo Tetris, and Snipper Clips, which is apparently the system seller that's flying under the radar with a lot of people, mm. but that's really an awesome experience. Also fun to say. Snipper clips. See, there you go. And finally, later this year, the Switch will get Rhyme and Splatoon 2 in the summer, followed by FIFA, Minecraft, NBA 2K, Super Mario Odyssey, Skyrim, Sonic Mania, Ultra Street Fighter 2, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So, the Switch will be ending the year with a pretty decent launch lineup. <laughs> uh, but it remains to be seen whether or not it's launching with enough games to really tempt fans early on, especially considering you can play Breath of the Wild on your Wii U, that is, if you own a Wii U, which, to be fair, a lot of people don't, but it is right. there. <laughs> you know, like, honestly, the nice thing about what Nintendo is doing is, if I have to find like a bright side, it's already pre-ordered out. Oh yeah. So the, the early adopters are already in, and this games lineup will be solid enough by the time it gets around to holiday when people start to look at buying them for gifts and such. Mm -hmm. So they're not doing it that bad, I guess, if you look at the long term. It's just those of us that are already pre-ordering it are gonna run out of stuff to play. Very true. But what do you think of the Switch's lineup? Are you getting one, like we did? Let us know in the comments. It's a Wii. And for all your Nintendo news, and the last few oh. Wii jokes we can make before it all switches over. Oh. <laughs> like this video <laughs> and subscribe to the no. I can't believe you. I cannot believe you just did that. <laughs> you're Thank, you're you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Or should I flowers? <laughs> 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 Nowhere. <laughs>